nuclear war couples later on with fear of biological and chemical war. What if the Soviets spread deadly bacteria over highly populated areas or spray into the air invisible chemicals that can kill thousands on contact? A decision is made in high places. Tests are needed. San Francisco Bay, California, 1950. During seven days in September, the army simulates a bacteriological attack on the city. Declassified army documents reveal that in six such attacks, large amounts of bacteria called serratia marcescens are sprayed towards San Francisco from a small navy boat in the bay. Carried by the wind, the airborne bacteria spread over a large area. The army wants to know how far the bacteria can go. These declassified maps of the actual test show the extent of the area that is covered. The army decided to do what was called a vulnerability test program. And the effort was over a period of 20 years actually, between 1949 and 1969, when hundreds of tests were conducted over populated areas to see whether by spraying germs and certain chemicals whether they would endanger a large population. And the army did spray a lot of bacteria around although they weren't the highly dangerous kind that would be used as an actual weapon the bacteria that they used did have some health risks. The invisible attack would probably have gone undetected but something goes terribly wrong. A few days after, 11 people are admitted to the Stanford Medical Center in San Francisco. They are all suffering from a severe bacterial infection. One of the patients, Ed Nevin, dies. I was nine years old in 1950 when, uh, when he died. My mother was a nurse. She was actually helping to attend to him. And it was a terrible sickness. He was going from, uh, from high fevers to chills. He had uh, hallucinations. And so it was a very, very serious infection and fever that was causing all that in him. The Serratia Marcesson's infection is so unusual to the doctors and scientists at the hospital that three of them team up and write a scientific article about it. At the time, the doctors are unaware of the test the army had conducted using the same type bacteria just days before. The scientific article is published in October 1951 in the Journal of the American Medical Association, reaching a very limited readership. However, the army does see the article and a panel of four military scientists reviews the case. Some months after, they concluded and this is a very strange conclusion, that the army's bacteria and the bacteria that caused the infections in the hospital were not of the same strain or the same nature and that any, any relationship was apparently coincidental. That was a real stretch. It takes 25 more years before the story finds its way out into the open. I carried the morning paper on December 22, 1976 to the uh, art station. I was reading uh, the front page and read with some interest because of my work as a trial lawyer. The front page told a story of testing that was done in 1950 in San Francisco. I was surprised, but actually somewhat cynical as a trial lawyer. Nothing surprises me anymore was sort of my then 35-year-old attitude. I uh, turned the page and was shocked to find my grandfather's picture. And they related the story that, in fact, he was the only one who died from the testing, that he died from serratia marcescens, the very bacterium that was sprayed in the air. Nevin consults with his family and decides to take the federal government to court. The trial begins on March 16, 1981, more than 30 years after the actual event took place. 
the heart of the case to me was that you can't test uh, American people like guinea pigs. I mean, if we have anything in our country, we, we proudly look at uh, with disdain upon the practices of the Soviet Union and the Iron Curtain countries of those days in the midst of the Cold War. So the heart of the case to me was this, this terrible discovery that uh, we were no better than what we were describing. Three months later, on May 20th, the Honorable Judge Conti rules against Nevin on all counts. He concludes that the Army's decision to test falls within the discretionary function exception, which gives the United States government immunity from lawsuits on such matters. The United States Supreme Court later upholds this ruling. What would have been required to win this case would have been to overcome hundreds and hundreds of years of tradition of governmental immunity that we got from, uh, from England, and that was a king. And it was still a remnant of our law, even in America, with our form of government. And his honor, at least, felt it became clear that uh, we couldn't overcome that, uh, that special protection the government has. You just can't sue the government for these important matters, uh, says the immunity doctrine. And so what it would have taken to, to win the case would have been to overcome that immunity doctrine, and at least in these judges it wasn't so. San Francisco is not the only city targeted for a simulated biological attack. 